at C3, we are so glad that you're here and you've made the decision to worship with us. So come on, let's stand and sing this out together. See 
cross over me Immerse me in water as deep as the sea
spirit in this place. And Father, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that, to acknowledge that your spirit is here and you're moving in our hearts and in our midst. Father, I don't want to miss out on it. God, I don't want to miss out on what you're doing in this place. I don't want to miss out on the work you're doing in this community, in our state, in our nation, in our world. Father, revival is our prayer. Revival is our cry. But would it start with us? Lord, in this place this morning, would you begin a work in each of our hearts? Father, would you convict us? Would you reveal to us the things that are holding us back? from being able to step into the movement of your spirit. Father, less of us and so much more of you. Empty us of ourselves, yeah. empty of us of our pride and areas, Lord, where we, where we haven't completely surrendered to you. Father, we, we make that our prayer, Lord. We surrender to you in this place, in this moment, right now. We don't wanna take another step if it's not in surrender because we know that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so Father, we claim the name of Jesus because we know that there is authority in the name of Jesus. And so Lord, we don't wanna take another step without you. Use us, Father, in our places of work, Lord, in our homes, in our schools. God, everywhere you send us, Lord, we wanna be vessels of your spirit. We wanna be vessels of revival. So Lord, we thank you that you're using us in this place. Thank you, Father, because you are so faithful to continue the work that you've begun in every person in this place, and every heart. Lord, we give you this morning, we give you today, do what you wanna do, Lord. We love you, we love you, Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, come on, and everybody said, amen. Come on, he's worthy of your praise, so can you lift him up? already had in church. Are you glad you came to church this morning? Well, we believe that God has so much in store for you. Welcome. We're so, so glad that you're here. If you're a first-time guest, thank you for joining us. Come on, church. Can we give those joining us for the first time a special welcome? We pray that you feel at home this morning. And there's a team in the lobby. Um, they're by the New Here banner. They'd love to meet you, connect with you, and give you a gift. If you're, welcome, if you're watching online, we want to say welcome to you. Those joining us on our online campus, we're so grateful you're here. Make sure to drop in the chat where you're joining us from. Say hello, maybe even drop an emoji. Well, as you guys head back to your seats, we want to give you a chance to turn and greet people standing around you. My name is Jen. Thanks for joining us for service today. We are so excited that you're here worshiping with us this morning, and we would love the opportunity to connect with you. One way we do that is through our Connect card. You can access the card simply by using your phone to scan the QR code in the seat pocket in front of you or here on the screen. We want to know if you're a first time guest, if you've made a fresh start, or even how we can be praying for you. If you'd like to sign up for Next Steps to learn more about C3 and how you can get connected with our church, you can indicate that as well. And don't forget to stay updated on everything going on in the life of our church by following us on social media. If you'd like to watch services or listen to previous messages, you can find those on our YouTube page as well as c3church.com watch. If you are currently a leader or are interested in becoming a leader, we want to invite you to a special leadership gathering we will be hosting on May 5th at 6 p.m. We want to take some time to pour into you and help you develop as a leader. Dinner will be provided, so be sure to let us know that you are coming by going to c3church.com and RSVP in the scrolling announcements. We are so excited to invest in you and help you become the leader God has called you to be. 
On June 25th and 26th, we'll be hosting our annual kids conference called Submerge. Submerge is a two-day event for kids kindergarten through sixth grade geared toward creating a fun and life-giving environment for them to learn more about Jesus on their level. Your child will experience biblical teachings and discussions, worship, games, and crafts, all tying into the main theme for the weekend. To register today, visit c3church.com submerge. As we continue in our worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings, I want to let you know about the four ways you can give here at C3. You can give online at c3church.com give, through the C3 Church app, by mail, or drop off at the C3 Cafe. If you're in the room today, there are also giving stations in the back of the worship center if you'd like to give on your way out. I want to share just one of the ways your giving impacts others, not just locally and nationally, but also internationally. We partner with a village in Guatemala called Trace Marias. Over the years, your generosity has not only provided food and essentials, but has also made it possible for a church to be built right in the village. March 7th was their first service, and every week, hundreds of chairs are set, ready to receive newcomers. The village of Tres Marias is prayerful that God will provide a full house in the days to come. Thank you so much for your obedience to give. Be encouraged that your generosity makes a difference. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you. You're looking good as always. I'm so glad you're here. Those of you online, I can't see you, but I know you're looking good too. Maybe you're not. I don't know. It's up to you. But uh, <laughs> I'm so glad that you guys have joined us today. As we continue, last week we launched a series and we'll continue today. It's called The Value Driven Life. How many know we can be driven by a lot of things? We can be driven by the need for success. We can be driven by the need for approval. We can be driven by fear. We can be driven by all kinds of things, pleasing people. But we need to understand that we need to be driven by the values that come from God. And so that's the purpose of this series. And so let me kind of review a little bit. If you, uh, be sure and grab your Bible and, and uh, something to take notes with. You'll definitely want to be taking notes today. Uh, as we talk about the value-driven life. And uh, I shared last week that, that, first of all, that we need to have a vision. Everybody say vision. Because a vision provides direction. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. And so without a vision, your family will perish. Without a vision, your business will perish. We need to have a vision that comes from God, and that provides Direction. So you now you know where you're going, where you're headed. But then the values provide guidance. Values are the rails that help us stay on track. And have you know, a lot of us and a lot of people that you may know have fallen off the tracks this last year, right? They were kind of headed, and then all of a sudden the values may have gotten shaken up a little bit. Have you know it's been? I don't have to tell you it's been a challenging year. And it's been, and there's still challenges all around us. And Jesus told us, he warned us, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So, so I believe that during this season, I know even for me, some of my values have been challenged, some of my values have been shook, it, shook up a little bit, uh, and, and sh- kind of, uh, you know, r- maybe out of priority. And so we're talking about, in this time, during this series, What kind of values that you and I should have? And last week we kicked off with talking about the value of being Holy Spirit led. And have you know the Holy Spirit is the 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 guide of of all guidance. I mean, he he's the ultimate guide. And and none of these values will even work in our life unless we first of all understand that we must be Holy Spirit led. Amen? Amen. And if you weren't here last Sunday, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, but it's so important that we understand that we must be Holy Spirit led, not tr- led by tradition, not led by popular opinion, not led by what other, everybody else is doing, but ask the Holy Spirit what he would have us to do. And now today we're going to talk about two more values. But values are so important because that, first of all, we need to understand that God values me. In fact, let's say it together. God values me. One more time, those online join us. God values me, that you are valuable. 
You may not feel like that you're valuable, but I'm here to tell you right now that God looks at you and he says you're valuable. You're a child of God. You're a princess of the king. You're a warrior for the king. That God sees you as valuable. Amen, everybody? Let that sink in. God sees you as valuable. And then when you understand that God sees you as valuable because you know yourself better than anybody else, you're like, wow, God values me and I know all my weaknesses and imperfections and mistakes. Then, second of all, we can value other people. I mean, all people matter to God. And all people should matter to us. So then you value other people. The third thing is then when you understand that God values me and I should value other people, then we add value to other people. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How can we add value to other people? John Maxwell, I shared this last week, John Maxwell said, success is adding value to yourself. Significance is adding value to other people. So how can we do that? Two values we're going to talk about today that I believe that each of us need to individually have. These are also, by the way, values that we have here at C3 Church. But I believe in order for us to live them out as a church family, how many of you know each of us, each of us individually need to embrace them and take ownership and apply them to our life? Amen? Amen? Amen. So first thing is this, focus on the unchurched. Write that down. Focus on on the unchurched. How many know as believers we have to get our eyes off of ourself and get our eyes around us? We're going to talk about who the unchurched is in a moment, but you can probably figure it out. Unchurched means that they don't have church. <laughs> they don't have a church family. But what does it mean to focus on the unchurched? It means to live an outward focused life, an outward, have an, be a part of an outward focused church rather than being inward focused which is the opposite right where it's us four no more holy huddle we're all around a campfire we have all of our needs met but we're we're not looking outward to the people around us you show me a church that is dying or a church that at one time was flourishing and strong and vibrant and somewhere along the journey they got their eyes off of the people outside of the church and they got the eye, their eyes on themselves and it became what's comfortable to them and what they liked rather than building a bridge to the lost and the hurting people. So what is the church? Well, if you look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, the first time we see church mentioned in the New Testament, we see Jesus says in verse 18, Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my, can we say it together? Church. church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. The word church in the Greek means to, to have an assembly or to gather together. That's literally what the word ekklesia, the, the, the word church means, ekklesia, to gather, to assemble together. And as a church, we assemble together as a body of believers to celebrate and to worship him. We gather together for worship and then we scatter for ministry. See, the church... Is not a building. The church is not a program. The church is not a denomination. The church is not some private club. But we are the church. You don't go to church, you are the church. In other words, we are the church, right? Reminds me of that old song back in 1985. How many of you guys remember some of the classics in the 80s, 1985? As I'm preparing this sermon, I can't help it. Songs pop in my head. Random things pop in my head. And so the song, We Are the World, 1985. Come on. Remember that? All these artists came together and uh, trying to make a difference in Africa and provide hope for people who had AIDS, 1985. How many of you guys remember the 80s? How many of you were alive in the 80s? You're alive in the 80s, all right? How many of you weren't born yet? I feel sorry for you. The 80s had the best music. And the late 70s as well. So, 1985, the song, We Are the World, it became a number one song. I'm not sure for how long, but then it's been remade and so forth. But it goes, can we, say it, can we sing it together? We are the world. We, okay, that's enough. All right. That was good, though. Uh, <laughs> now you're going to have that song stuck in your head all day. You'll be like, 
Man, I went to church and I got We Are the World stuck in my head. But the lyrics are, I looked them up. So I thought, okay, what are the lyrics? So the lyrics are, the chorus says, we are the world, we are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true we'll make a better day, just you and me. So I thought, well, what if we change the word world to church? It would say, we are the church. We are God's children. We are the ones who can make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true we'll make a better day, just you and me. I thought that was kind of cool. Because the local church is the hope of the world. Hope's name is Jesus, and the local church is the hope of the world. And people today need hope like never before. You realize every single person on the planet, everybody has, has needs. They want to be known, and they want to belong. That's, that's what drives, honestly, a lot of our decisions and places that we go and things that we do. People want to be known, and people want to belong. Well, what does a life-giving church provide? For people to know, to be known, first of all, that, that, God, that God loves you and that you can have a personal relationship with him and that you can be known by other people, that you're not just a number, that you're a person. And then second of all, that you can belong. That's what the church family is here for. It's a gathering together. It's an assembly together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling, the ecclesia of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. There is a priority the Bible shows us that there is something powerful that takes place when we assemble together, there's only a few things that God tells us to, to not forsake. And he says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. How do we know there's something powerful that takes place when we gather together, even in person? And I praise God for online. And I, I, I am so thankful. Many of you are here lo watching locally, and some of you are watching around the country. And can we put our hands together for all those watching online? We are so thankful that you're a part of us. Some of you may be in the hospital. You might be... Uh, you know, in just different places. Maybe you're on vacation, uh, you're traveling on business, um, maybe you're homesick, uh, maybe you're dealing with some challenges right now. We want you to know we love you and we value you. And you're assembling together in the best way that you can through our online, which we thank God for. But when we went completely online, how do you know there was a void? And there's just something powerful. And, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the church is not about, you know, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, like we're still the church. We're still, yeah, that's true. We're, we're still doing a lot of the things of the church. And I agree with that. Even when we were online, you guys did an amazing job. The dream team was amazing. The staff was unbelievable. How we pivoted to go to watch parties and online and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to continue to do that. We're, a, we're an online church that has an in-person gathering, right? So it, it, it's different now in 2021. But there's something powerful that takes place. When we came back together that first time, July 19th, 2020, a day I'll never forget, man, it's just something powerful. And ever since then, it's just like God just continues to move. Can you sense it? Can you feel it? It's like this, this, this reviving, this renewing, this, this fresh start. It, that's one of the reasons why I'm going through these values, because I almost feel like it's a brand new church. It's like a fresh start. It's like a relaunch, because our world is different than it was two years ago. Right? And some of you weren't even a part of our church two years ago. Well, welcome home. We're glad you're a part of our church. So what can you do? There's a few things you can do, even online. First of all, you can pray. All of us can pray. Number two, we can invite. Invite them to come to church. Invite them to join you online. Invite them to join a watch party. And thirdly, is to bring. If you're here in person, why don't you bring them or say, hey, I'll meet you in the lobby or... I'll meet you in the cafe, and, and we can sit together, find out what service they're coming to, but, but bring them. If they need a ride, even be willing to, to offer them transportation if needed. 
But the idea of praying, inviting, and bringing. That simply by doing that. In fact, right now, how, how, you, how many of you know it's like pretty, pretty simple now? With, with the social media and online, right? You can just hit that share button. And literally, after the service today, you can go home or you can, after the service, you can, you can hit the share button to our Facebook Live or, or the online campus or YouTube. And, and literally, you can change a life by hitting the share button. If you're watching online, it's real easy for you. Just hit the share button and say, join me right now for worship. You just never know who's going to be scrolling even later on today or maybe throughout this week. And they're going to watch that and their entire eternal destiny is going to be changed. And perhaps the legacy of their whole family is going to be redirected towards a life-giving relationship with Jesus. So let's do that every week. Pray for people who need hope. Invite them and then bring them. So the first value is to focus on the unchurched, focus on people who need hope. When we started C3 in 1998, right down the road at Cleveland Elementary School in a cafeteria with about 50 people or so, our vision was never to reach people who already go to church. Our vision was to reach people who don't go to church, who are far from God. We want to reach people who maybe the day before they were doing things that they shouldn't be doing, but they couldn't to church the next day. Maybe they're giving God one last chance. The vision I had when we first started the church was, I used to think, man, what if we just went to a cul-de-sac and we put a stage up and got a praise and worship band out there and, 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 and just say, hey, come out of your houses and come with your shorts or whatever, your flip-flops. We're going to have church right here. We're bringing the church to you. And can I be honest with you, every Sunday as I stand up here, now we're almost 23 years old as a church family. I know I don't look that old to pastor that long. And I still picture in my mind, we're at the end of a cul-de-sac, and you guys just come as you are. And I pray that you would leave radically changed. Our vision has never been to reach people who go to other churches. And if you're here from another church, we're glad you're here. You don't have to leave. But our vision, our passion, can I remind you, it's not about people who are already have hope. We're looking for people who don't have hope where we can make a difference in Jesus' name. Come on, can we put our hands together and thank God for the mission that he's given to us? Real hope for real people in a real world. The second value is serve. Everybody say serve. I serve. We serve. That's the value that we must have is I'm, I'm going to serve other people. Even if you're an authority, I mean, there's something powerful about being a parent or being a leader and serving those people who maybe you have authority over. Jesus modeled for us, didn't he? When he got on his knees and he got some water and he washed the disciples' stinky, nasty, dirty feet. And he said, go and do likewise. He modeled for us what it looks like to be a servant, to have a servant's heart to have a servant's attitude. What does it look like to be a servant? And that's one of the powerful things that we can do as a believer is serve others rather than always expecting others to serve us. We see in Matthew chapter 25, if you have your Bible, let's look there together. Matthew 25, beginning in verse 14. This is in the New International Version. We see a story that Jesus tells. It's a, it's a parable. It's not a true story. It's a, it's a story to illustrate a point. And it says in verse 14, it says, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey, and the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work. Everybody say, to work. And gained five more bags, five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more, but the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. 
I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Verse 24, then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. Everybody say afraid. afraid. And went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the, with the banker so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where they will, there will be wap, wapping, weeping and gnashing of teeth. How do you know Jesus cares <laughs> about what he gives to us? And he cares about what we do with what he's given to us. The man with five talents or the five bags of gold went to work put it to work. He used it. He was faithful with what God had given to him, and he doubled it. And the man who had two, he doubled it to four, and God blessed them. But the one who had one bag buried it in the ground because he was filled with a spirit of fear, he was afraid, and as a result, he even lost what he had. And Jesus has some strong words in this story, you wicked, lazy servant simply because he didn't use the one bag that God had given to him. This story tells me a couple of things. First of all, first of all, all of us are different. <laughs> the guy who got one bag wasn't less important than the one who had five. The one who had two bags wasn't less important than the one that had five. There, there's not, it's not about value, but all of us are different, and God has given all of us unique and different ability. Some of us can do, you ever met somebody who's like crazy multiple talented? I mean, they can do like so many different things. It's, it's pretty crazy. And I'm not one of those people. I can do just two or three things average. But, uh, you know, I can't do a lot of things. I can preach a little bit. I can lead. You know, there's a few things I can do. But I could not do what the production team is doing right now. I could not, I'm not a technical person. If you have something that's broken, please don't call me. <laughs> I just can't fix it. I'm just not, uh, if I fixed it, it would, it would not be, you would not be pleased with how I fix it. Even in my house, I'm like, hey, Martha, this thing over here is broken. Can you, let's, let's YouTube it and see how we can fix it. Uh, I was thinking about this morning, you know, I saw my son, Caleb's, some of you know my son is our worship minister and, and he was over here on the drums. I was like, is that Caleb over there on the drums? I mean, last week he was on the bass. The week before that he was on the keyboards or leading worship. I mean, it, it, the kid can play like every instrument up here. And I, I took seven years of piano. And I can play maybe the way we were in Brian's song. <laughs> and not very well. I can pick it and, and I can play, uh, what's that, 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 that crop, chopstick. Yeah, I can play chopsticks. I've, I've kind of perfected that. If you want to hear it later, I'll do that. But some people God's given much to and some he's given little. But the point is not that we're all different. So we don't look down on people because they have less than or, they, or we don't look down on people because they have more than. We're just all different. And number two, be faithful with what God has given to you. Just be faithful. Rather than looking at what other people have or don't have, just be faithful with what God has put in your hands. And I believe God will bless you. I sure don't want to hear God say, you wicked and lazy servant. <laughs> I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well, um, how many you know there's the basic needs that we have as humans? That it takes a while for the world and psychology to, to catch up with the Bible. But if you look at psychology, 
much of the time, they think it's some kind of revelation. But it's actually something that, that the Bible has told us for over 2,000 years. For example, there's, uh, you might have heard a guy named Maslow. He has five levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So according to Maslow, in psychology, he's identified five needs that every person on the planet has. You may or not, may not agree with them. That doesn't really even matter. But these are his, this is his opinion. First of all is physical needs. He says the basic need, the number one need, is we have physical needs for food and water, right, to survive. We need our basic needs met, physical needs met. Number two, we have security needs. He says everybody needs security. That's the second level. That's, that's that you need personal security. You need employment. You need resources. You need health. The third need, and, and it kind of progresses, that according to Maslow, you need social needs. You have, all of us have social needs, according to Maslow, that you want to belong somewhere. Fourth is esteem needs, or self-esteem, or we have esteem needs. It's the feeling of accomplishment, like I've accomplished something. And then the fifth, and he says this is the highest level, the most fulfilling level that everybody has, is self-actualization, which, achieve, which means achieving one's full potential, watch this, by using their gifts and talents. By reaching your full potential, we're like, wow, God made me for this. This is my full potential. Do you realize that actually all of these can be met by God in a church family? Every single one of them. There was further research, and people have diagnosed this, and is this really true, and blah, blah, blah. And there's a university that did some research a few years ago, and they found out, they studied all different types of cultures, and they looked all around, and they're trying to actually kind of... Uh, see if this really worked or not, if this was really true. And they found out, and their opinion was, there are two of these five needs, no matter what culture you're in, every single culture, whether it was a wealthy culture or a poor culture or a poor country or a country that had more than the other, every single country, even if they didn't have adequate food and water, the most important needs for them was to belong and self-actualization. Even if they didn't have some of their physical needs met, even if they were hungry and thirsty, everybody, according to their research, was that everybody needs to belong and everybody needs self-actualization. As I was thinking about that, what do we provide as a church family? A place to belong and a place to reach your highest potential by using your gifts and talents. The church was provided. The church is the answer. And we have the opportunity to make a difference. You realize what this says is that as we look at the Bible and as we look at God's word and we look even at what Ephesians 4 says, that you need to serve for you. That's why I don't apologize saying you need to serve on the dream team. You need to be a part serving God. Because it's not that we're over here like we're this church that needs help. No, you need to serve for you. Because there are, there are unfulfilled needs in your life that only God can fulfill and being a part of a church family. It would be a great place to say amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Let's look at that. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people. Everybody say equip. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So the role is, often we think traditionally as a church that like we hire staff to do the ministry. We teach our staff that God hasn't hired us, God hasn't called us to to, uh, to do the ministry, but to equip our, our church family, to equip the dream team that together we can do the ministry. How many know we're limited if we just rely upon a handful of people? Yeah. But if all of us realize I am called by God and I am anointed by God and I can, I can make a difference with my life, collectively together we can change the world. Yeah. We are the church. We call it the dream team here, our army of volunteers that serve faithfully. It takes a team to see the dream become a reality. Our dream, our prayer is real hope for real people in a real world. 
And our dream in our heart right now is, Lord, send us revival. Move in our area, move in our nation like never before. And I, I was looking at some benefits of, of serving on the dream team. You know, how many of you like perks? Like you join something, you get a little some perks, right? You get, you get some benefits. It's like, yeah, I, I joined this, you know. And I, I get some perks on the side. Well, here are the benefits that God gives you from serving. Uh, number one, you live out God's purpose for your life. Number two, you are an example to others that God can use them too. You're like, man, if God can use them, he can sure use me. Number three, you leave a legacy. You actually leave, because your children will be impacted. If you have children, they'll be watching you. But, wow, God, maybe God could use me. Maybe they're, your grandchildren will be impacted. You leave a legacy. Number four, you discover gifts, talents, and interests that you didn't even know you had. Number five, you get to put treasures in heaven. Six, you give people the greatest gift of all is Jesus. Number seven, you get to be a part of something much bigger than yourself. Number eight, you get to celebrate when lives are changed, knowing that you played a part in it. That means every time you hear a testimony, every time you see somebody baptized, every time somebody tells you about their life being changed, you played a part in that. Whether you helped park a car or serve some coffee or you're working with the children in our C3 kids or with C3 zeal, you played a role in that. Number nine, you grow closer to Christ. We grow closer to Christ as we serve. And number 10, you get to change the world. We get to change the world together. And our greatest days are ahead. Here's a testimony I received from one of our dream teamers. They said, I started attending C3 about two years ago. And I, I knew as soon as I got to C3 that I wanted to serve somewhere. And by serving on the dream team, you're helping God expand his ministry. And that's where the magic happens, according to her. I started with the C3 Cafe. Come on, C3 Cafe, where are you? And the C3 uh, production team. Where's the production? They're, they can't say anything because they're behind the, <laughs> behind the deal. Then decide to focus on just production, specifically broadcast sound. Broadcast sound is everything you hear through our online campus. I have learned so much about sound in the last couple of months. And the technical behind the scenes is exactly what I like to do. I love being able to make the service more enjoyable for everyone that is listening online and from home. Isn't that awesome, you guys? Can you tell she is feeling fulfilled? And she didn't realize that she had this gift, but she knew that she likes more behind the scenes, so she, our team equipped her and trained her, and now she's right now taking this, taking the gospel to all those of you who are watching online, whatever location you're at, she's playing a role in that, of getting the gospel to you. Isn't that amazing? From just coming to church getting involved, and changing the world. Maybe you're here and you say, you know, I want to get involved. I'll, I want to do kind of, I'll, I'm not a part of the dream team. I want, I'm not a part of the church family. I'd like to come alongside and, and join C3 in, in the vision that God's given to us. Well, I'm glad that you're interested. And the next step for you is to come to Next Steps. It's the first Sunday of every month, 1030 in our conference center. It's a great place to get to know other people as well as to find out more about our church. It's a no-strings-attached opportunity for you to kind of explore and see what we're all about. And then you'll have an opportunity to be a part of our church family, and you'll get information of how you can be involved in the dream team. You say, I don't know where to serve. I've learned just start somewhere. Just start somewhere, and the Holy Spirit's going to show you what's next. And where you start may not be where you finish, but just start serving. I started serving with, with middle school boys. And, uh, and, and it, it, from there, it just continued to progress. But I started with a bunch of middle school boys that, that it was, nobody wanted to lead. And I'm like, well, I'll take them. And it was awesome to see what God did, not only in them, but in my life. And I realized that God had called me to that. He'd called me to serve students, which I did for 13 years. And then we started C3, and I told the students on Wednesday night, I said, that I, I still see myself as a, as a student minister. 
I just get to work with your parents too and your, and your little brothers and sisters. I still feel like I'm just a, a grown-up youth pastor. Maybe I'm not even grown up, but I'm a, I'm a youth pastor up here preaching to adults, right? Because I love our students. Don't you love our students, you guys? So let me give you another practical thing you can do. Serving is much more than just, happens much more than just on Sundays and more than just what happens in this building. We serve all throughout our community. And one of the things that you can do this week, and there's in your seat is a card that says, Jesus loves you. On the back side it says, and we do too. Would you take that card out at this time? Just take this card out. This is for you to take home. And this week, would you do an act of kindness? Would, this week, would you do something kind for somebody else and then and just give them this card? If you're doing it through text or, you know, you can, you can, just, verb, you can just text um, whatever you want to text them similar to this. But this week, take this card and do an act of kindness. Buy somebody's coffee, double or triple tip a waiter or waitress. Whatever it might be. And then just simply give them this card and say, I just was thinking about you. I just want to bless you. Maybe you don't even know who they are. Just say, hey, I just want to, God told me to do this for you. You just never know how God's going to use that to make a difference. And this week, our team, if you go to c3church.com slash kindness, this week, our team has put together a whole bunch of ideas to give you ideas of what you can do this week. And if you go to that website, if you're online, you can go right now c3church.com slash kindness. You'll see a whole bunch of ideas. You certainly aren't limited to those ideas, you, but it might spark an idea for you to do for a neighbor, for a friend, for a coworker, for somebody who needs hope, and you just never know how that act of kindness might change their life forever. You might say, well, what good is this going to do? You just never know. Like They say it takes about seven touches of kindness for someone to be open to the gospel if they're like far from God and they're not even interested in God. About seven touches. You might be touch number seven. <laughs> they're just one touch away, one invite away from their life being changed forever. Or maybe they're hurting so bad it just takes one person to show them some love. The goal is, the goal is just to plant seeds, plant seeds, and watch God do the rest. Amen, everybody? Let me tell you a, a story. Uh, Martha was coming home from an international trip, and I was excited. She'd been away for a while with with a, a, a group from C3. And uh, I was excited to go pick her up at the airport. And I had plenty of margin to pick her up. And then I realized, you know, I really should take like some flowers. You know, it'd be kind of cool. She's been gone for a while. I need to take some flowers. So when she arrives, you know, when you arrive from, from a trip or whatever, and there's a group of people like with a big banner and stuff, I didn't want to be that guy just empty handed, like, hey, give me a hug. He's like, where's, <laughs> that's all you got is a hug. And uh, so I picked up some, I went by to pick up some flowers uh, on the way, and, and I, was kinda, I was kind of in a hurry. I, I didn't realize how long it took. They were like, do you like this flower, or do you like this flower, you like this flower? I'm like, just pick me some flowers. I was like, got to go. My wife's coming home from a trip. And so I was kind of in a hurry. And I, so while I'm st- standing there waiting, talking to this employee at the florist, while the, the other lady was fixing my deal, fixing my flowers, the arrangement. And so we started talking. He started telling me his story. He was like, yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow, going back home up to the Northwest. And I said, well, what happened? He said, well, I moved down here to open up a restaurant and to start a business. And I had this dream. I had all this money saved up to, to start this deal, and it didn't go well. I, I lost it all. The restaurant didn't work out. You could tell he was just so downcast. And so tomorrow I fly home, back home. And you could just see the brokenness and the hurt on his face and in his his body language. And we began to talk a little bit. And he asked me what I did. And I said, well, I'm the pastor at a church down the street. He said, oh, what church? I said, C3 Church. And he said, oh, I've been to your cafe. I popped in the C3, I go to the C3 cafe. He said, but I've never been to your church. He said, I don't go to church, but I've been to your cafe. I was awesome, awesome. And uh, so we talked a little bit longer and I said, then the flowers came. I was like, praise the Lord. 
And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, pray for him. And I said, well, would it be okay if I prayed for you? He said, yeah. And so I just took, took, took a moment and prayed for him. that God, He would know that God loves him, that Jesus died for him, that God is going to bless him, take care of him, walk with him, bless him as he goes back home, that he would know he's not alone. Just prayed a simple prayer. It wasn't long. And I said, amen. He said, thank you. As I was walking to my car with the flowers heading to, my air, heading to the airport, I overheard him talking to the owner of the, 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 the florist shop. He said, dang it, I'm cleaning it up a little bit. He said, dang it, I should have gone to that church. And my heart broke. Because I wonder how many people are all around us, maybe even hopping in the cafe, and they're just one invitation away. They're just one act of kindness. If somebody just showed them some love, and that certainly isn't a criticism at all, it's just an awareness that there's people all around us, maybe even on our campus, we host soccer on our campus in the backfields they get to use we let the community use our camp our field and we have people that come on our campus for red cross and for disaster relief and there's people on this campus all the time and you just never know how god could use. and in our community just because they know that we're here doesn't mean that they're going to come somebody has to love them and it may be one simple act of kindness, one prayer. All I did was pray. Would it take 20 seconds, 30 seconds max? And I just pray that when he went back home to the Northwest, that maybe I planned a seed that somebody else would come alongside and they would, he, his life would be changed forever. But that's what our hearts should break for. People who need hope. Let's, let us hear a bunch of like, dang it, I need to go to that church. I need to go to that church. Somebody cared enough to love me. One of the biggest compliments I heard was, well, I don't go to church, but if I did, I would go to C3. <laughs> Maybe be that kind of church with that kind of reputation. Amen, everybody? Amen. Well, let's pray together. Maybe you're here today or watching online and you say, I'm not sure that I'm a Christian. I'm not sure that I know Jesus is my Savior and Lord. I want to give you an opportunity right now, right where you are, to pray and receive him as your personal Savior, believing that he died on the cross and that he rose from the grave. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. In verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be what? Saved. saved. Will you pray with me? Believers, join us. We're going to pray this out loud. Say, dear God, I realize that I've sinned and I need you. Please forgive me. Thank you for dying on the cross and for rising from the grave. Come into my heart and save me. Thank you for giving me eternal and abundant life. Help me to live for you the rest of my life in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, can we celebrate all those who made the decision to follow Jesus? We are so proud of you. If you're online or even here in the room, if you would do me a favor, and if you would scan the QR code in the seat in front of you, there's a little card there, and all of us can do this, actually, and let us know how we can help you with your next steps. If, you, if you'd indicate that you made a fresh start with God, if you'd like to take next steps the first Sunday of the month, just indicate that in the card. If you'd like to be baptized, we baptize the second Sunday of every month. Just indicate that in the card. If we can pray for you, Put that in the card as well. If you're watching online, just scan the QR code that's there on your screen and let us know how we can help you take your next steps. Will you stand with me right now? I'm going to pray a second prayer for all of you.
I want to pray over you. Uh, if you're like me, when someone prays for me, I like to like open up my hands to God. If Maybe you do that if you're comfortable. Just open up your hands to God right now. Well, I just pray for every person right now in Jesus' name. God, for those who have physical needs, Lord, maybe they need a healing. Those who need a miracle in their finances. Those who need have some needs relationally. Those who maybe need their marriage to experience the power of God. Lord, whatever their need is right now, Lord, I pray that you would meet their needs. God, those who are overcome with anxiety and stress or maybe fear, Lord, I pray that, that you would meet their needs, Lord, that they would understand, Lord, that you are the God of all peace. God, maybe those who are Christians, but they've kind of fallen away. They've kind of been floundering and 2020 in this season has been so hard on them. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would just wrap your arms around them, God. They would know, Lord, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And Lord, today we pray that we would just see what you see, God, that we our heart would break for what your heart breaks for. And so, God, we cry out to you right now and we pray for revival. God, we pray for revival in our world. We pray for revival in our nation. God, we pray for revival in North Carolina. We pray for revival in Johnson County. God, we pray for revival here in our community. And Lord, may it start with me. Lord, may it start with us. May it start right here. Lord, may it start right now. And we're going to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody shouted. Come on, let's worship him. Let's exalt the name of Jesus. to go out and make a difference. But before you go, we want to speak a blessing over you from Ephesians 3.20. So lift out your hands and let's speak this together. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Well, you guys are dismissed. Have a blessed week.